Hi everybody, thank you for joining our webinar. Today we're going to be chatting about HVAC systems. My name is Rosa and I'm a BIM specialist at Baker Baines in the Cape Town office. We always start off with introducing who is Baker Baines. And Baker Baines is currently the fastest growing design and technology partner in South Africa. We are also one of the largest authorized gold partners and we specialize in a number of software and that includes software for architecture, engineering, construction, as well as process, plant and power. We also also an authorized training center and audit is authorized training center and we also sell Adabar as well as CAD learning, which is South Africa's only CAD e-learning and assessment tool. Right. At Baker Bands, we've got certain beliefs. The first one is in designing a better world. Basically, we've got technological role to play in influencing the impact of design in today's changing world. The second one is in delivering a better project and product. And basically, we've got the proven ability to engage with and consult with our clients to improve their delivery of any of the AAC projects or manufactured products. And then lastly, which is also my favorite one, is in technology adoption to produce results. Basically, we don't sell, we don't just sell you the software, but we assist you to learn how to use software. Right? On our agenda today, we're going to do we are going to look at an HVAC system, and basically that means an HVAC network. Um, and to do this, we're going to look at things like mechanical equipment, air terminals, as well as ducts. Right? HVAC systems. What exactly is an HVAC system? Well, basically an HVAC system or an HVAC network consists of the components that include mechanical equipment such as air terminals, ducts, as well as pipes. And the process of combining these components and ensuring that they work properly is a significant part of developing an HVAC project, right? Um, the HVAC system consists of these components and they usually provide heating and ventilation and air cooling to a building um, as you can see on my screen over here, right? Revit MEP software provides the tools for you to effectively design these systems correctly. You know, it's a couple of steps in the process of creating an HVAC system. Um, and these include adding the air terminals and mechanical equipment, creating a supply or return air system. Some of them are actually created automatically when you insert your components. Then it's also generating ductwork automatically or adding them manually. And then lastly, checking and modifying the system. All right. So what we are going to look at, so this will be a very live um, uh, webinar. I'm not going to have a lot of presentation. I'm just going to open up my Revit and start actually drawing. What you are looking at on my screen is firstly um, an HVAC system on the, on the top here. And then I'm going to run you through the settings of how you actually get to that set, um, how you get to your HVAC set, um, section of Revit. And then we're going to just touch on the mechanical settings. Okay, so I'm going to swap over to Revit. Right. If you look at my drawing over here, you'll see that I've got the HVAC showing in this building. Okay. Now, when we start, we the tools to begin creating um, and placing HVAC components are actually located on the top here on the ribbon under the systems tab and then the HVAC network or the HVAC panel. And what we do is you can click on either your ducts or your air terminals and then you can start placing them, right? Before you want to add your dust, ideally you want to review and modify your mechanical settings to suit your project or pro, um, office standards. These settings that control, these settings actually control the angles at which your ducts are drawn, as well as set default duct types and offsets. Um, obviously, where do you find this? Because you are going to look for it. So again, we're still in the systems tab. Under the mechanical settings, you can use this arrow over here to expand it and what that does is on the left plane you can choose the options that you want to review so if i want to review the duct settings you'll see over here you can then change it to suit your project standards one thing you need to note is that duct settings are set by project um, and it can be included in templates but you can also import it into a project 
from another project using the transfer project settings. Okay, so I'm not going to change anything here, right? But we are going to look at we are going to look at actually how to place your mechanical equipment. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my plan. Just zoom out a bit. Okay, so I'm going to close that. So in my drawing over here, in my floor plan, you'll see that I'm going to open up O1 Mechanical, and I'm. You can see there's obviously existing um, equipment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put new items on. All right, so I'm going to go over here. Then on under my systems tab, under the mechanical panel, I'm going to click on mechanical equipment. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to select um, a chilled water coil, which is the size 12, and I'm going to place it here. Right? I want to align it to the one on the right side. So what I do is under modify, under aligned, Click on that edge, and I click on this edge, and then I want to lock them because basically, when the one moves, I want the other one to move as well. Right? I also want to put one on this side, so I'm going to go systems. I'm going to say mechanical equipment. Um, I'm actually going to tag this one on placement, just so that let's see what this one's called. Let's take the tag off for now. I'm going to align that one also and lock it. Right? And now I've added mechanical equipment to my drawing. Again, what you can do is you know the space bar allows you to rotate items. You first unlock it and then rotate it. Right, I'm going to align it again. So I'm going to say let's just move it and align. So click on align again. There you go. And I'm going to do it. Your mechanical equipment. Um, there's not too much to say on it because the next one is how you would start adding your air terminals. All right, so a little, some of the things we are going to be looking at. Let me just double check here. Right. So this is my mechanical item. Obviously, you saw that I had the tag on placement option open. You can choose to switch it on or off, right? When you are putting in your mechanical equipment, you can also say, do you want to rotate it after placement? And when you click on it, and you place it, you can see you then have the option to rotate it like that. Okay. Okay, so those are my uh, mechanical equipment. We're going to look at air terminals and ducts, and then I'm going to run you through those items. Now, adding air terminals, or air terminals basically supply the building roofs, and um, actually, air terminals supply the air to buildings, right? so to the rooms in buildings from associated air handling units. Um, and it's best practice to begin the HVAC system by designing or placing these air terminals and mechanical equipment and then connecting those pieces to the ductwork. 
A few things to remember with air terminals is that you can place air terminals, you can either place them individually or you can batch copy it from a linked file. So you know when you do your batch copy, you click on your collaborate, you say copy, monitor, select the link. You click on your link, under your batch copy, if you say specify the behavior, you can then choose what kind of mechanical equipment you want to um, copy. Right, so you need to enable your batch copy and then start copying from there. Right, so you see there's no, there's no, um, there's no air terminals either strong to batch copy, but ideally that is how you would do it. It's copy, monitor, select the link and choose batch copy. Okay, uh, the other thing that you need to remember is that Air terminals are typically placed on hosts. So when I say host, I'm actually referring to a ceiling. And that's why when I start playing my air terminals, I would actually go to a ceiling plan, All right? Um, some of the air terminals can be placed on ducts as well. And then air terminals will display regardless of the cut plane of the view. All right, how do you actually place the air terminal? Under your systems, Tab, right, we're looking at the HVAC panel, and all we need to do is click on air terminal. And under your properties, you can actually choose what kind of air terminal you want. And then you've got your options either place on vertical, that refers placing the air terminal such um, on a vertical face like a wall. If you say play on place on face, which is the second option. It's going to place the air terminal on a defined face, such as a ceiling grid. So you can see here, it's going to pick up the grids. And if you use the last one, which is place on work plane, it's going to place the air terminal on the defined plane, such as either the level or the ceiling in a linked architectural um, model. Right? So I'm going to choose place on face. I'm just going to place my air terminal over here. Right? And then what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go align it to the grid. So make sure that it's aligned to the grid like that. Okay, now if I click on this air terminal in the properties, you can actually set the flow as well as all the other parameters, right? Um, so what I do is I click on my air terminal and I go to the properties and you'll see there's a lot of the properties that you can play with and play down with. So you can change your full, I mean, sorry, you can change your flow here if you click on it, um, and you can play around with that. Once your A terminal has been placed, you can actually modify the view um, using the standard modification tools, so, which is what I did. I used the align button. You can also use your move button and then move it from a point to a point. Um, you can also obviously copy multiples of this. So it's copy, strain multiple. I can copy a whole lot if I choose to do that. Right? I obviously don't want it. If you want a specific A terminal and that one isn't here, you would follow the standard options to say go insert. Let's say insert, load family. And I'm going to go to the South African family. Um, and then I'm going to go into our mechanical MEP. And you see there's, um, it's under components. Let's go general components. Oh, side components. And there's my A terminals. So this, if there is a specific one that you want, you can actually download it from here. All right, so I'm going to cancel because I don't want one now. Right. So there's my A terminal. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy them so that this little area looks exactly like that one. Okay, I'm just going to copy it. Let's copy my point on. And then this to that grid. And to that grid. Right. 
Let me show you what this air terminal looks like in section. So I'm going to go back there and I'm just going to kind of section through it. So I'll put it back a bit. Are to be the section section two. Okay, we well see it. It's a bit too dark. See where I've placed the other ones. So, going to be section section. that you're seeing and there's all the other A terminals right as well as your lights okay so what we're going to do now is so now we've placed our, our A, we placed our A terminals so now we are going to have to look at our items itself right When I click on this um, mechanical equip piece of equipment, you'll see that it has connectors, right? Um, obviously, the connectors are self-expanding, so that's where you are connecting your pipe work or your ducting to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start connecting my duct work now. Right? Now, I'm going to be looking at ducting. We'll see that... These ducts connect mechanical equipment. Um, so you connect some mechanical equipment to the air terminals and pipes connect mechanical equipment to the hydronic supply, right? There's a lot of shapes and sizes that you can use and basically you can use regular flex ducts or pipes. When you're using the connected to equipment or the air terminals, you can quickly attach it to this, you can quickly attach it using ducts or pipes um, and basically, the software will allow you to automatically calculate any differences in height, right? Um, the cool thing about adding ducts and pipes is you can actually draw in plan and elevation section as well as 3D. To get the ducts and pipes at the right height, however, it's recommended that you start off in the mechanical equipment. Okay. Fittings in between changes of height and size are automatically applied as you model the element. So what we are going to do is we are going to start adding our, our ducts. Now there's a couple of things that I want to show you about ducts. So when I'm going to click on systems and I'm going to choose under the HVAC system duct, you'll see that you get these options, right? Automatically connect referred to by, it's usually on by default and that basically says that the pipes and the ducts connect to each other automatically at the right fittings. I would advise you to turn this option off if you want to draw a duct or pipe that remains at an original elevation, right? Um, the justification one, which is this one here, that will open a justification setting dialog box. And this is where you can set your default settings for horizontal justifications or um, horizontal offset or vertical justification. The other one is, the other option is inherent elevation. Um, that's like an on-off toggle. So you see, you can switch it on or off. If it's toggled on and you start modeling, the duct or pipe um, 
you can then snap it to an existing one or the new duct or pipe takes on the elevation of an existing one regardless of whether it's specified right and when you use the inherit size one you'll see that's also a toggle on or off if it's toggled on and you start modeling a duct or pipe by snapping to an existing one the new duct similar to inherit elevation will then take on the size of the existing one regardless of what is specified okay if you want to display um, center lines or, or, or round ducts. I'm just going to draw a duct in general. So I just want to show you different settings. So I'm just going to draw one here for now. Right. I've just drawn the standard one, which is a round one. If you want to see center lines with duct pipes, you need to then change, uh, switch it on. Sorry, you need to play around with your visibility settings. Okay, so if I'm changing my display to, wire, to wireframe, I can see the center line. Okay, otherwise, you can actually change it to shade it. Also, got your visibility graphics, new model categories, and we are ducts. Right, you'll see it's switch, switched on. Okay. So now we're going to start actually adding our ducts on. Um, and what we're going to do here is we are going to then connect it to our air terminals. So I'm going to open up another drawing, which is just find the school ducts drawing. So P, which is this one. Just upgrade that model. Um, and it's exactly the same drawing. I'm just going to show you how to do it. Okay, it's almost there. Okay, it's taking a little bit longer than expected. Okay, there we go. Right, so I'm in this drawing. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to. So here's my drawing, right? I'm going to go to my floor plan, which is mechanical one floor plan. And over here, it's already been placed. You'll see there's a couple of air terminals also. So I'm going to click on my air handling unit, which is this one, right? Um, and then you'll see that when I go to my properties, it actually shows that it's a supply air, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create a duct. Okay, so I'm first going to click on this one here. And if you just hover over it, you'll see that it actually tells you what it's going to do. So I'm going to click on create a duct. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go into my properties and I'm going to choose a rectangular, rectangular duct drain mode taps, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw it off like that, right? I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw it right below this way. You'll see that the bend actually comes up automatically. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I actually want this to move up a little bit. Right, a little bit more. Okay, then in my type selector, I'm then going to choose a round duct. So let's just check this one. I want it to be rectangular one. Then I'm going to go back here to systems, choose duct. 
and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose a round duct, and I'm going to choose a round duct absolute long radius, which is this one. And I'm going to draw it from this point out that way. Okay, I'm going to move it a little bit down. Okay. Again, you'll see that it actually attaches itself automatically. Actually, wait, I'm actually going to show you the other options. I'm going to go do there. I'm going to go duct. I'm going to choose round duct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say inherit elevation. All right, then in the options bar, I'm going to say I'm going to set my diameter to 150. Right. Actually, you know what? Let me just do that again. I'm going to leave this one on. Okay, so we leave that one on. Um, then I'm going to go modify. So now I'm going to have to draw another dot. So I'm going to go, let's just double check what they have. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to go, sister, I'm going to go dot, and now I'm going to choose. You'll see that if you hover over your dot, because I want to connect it to that A terminal, it actually shows you where it lines up. You see a little pink X over there. Um, I want that to be a 150 pipe. Right. Now I'm going to do it here and I'm going to do it that way. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a flex pipe in here or flex stack. So I'm going to click on the flex stack. I'm going to choose the first one that's available. I'm going to leave it at that diameter. I'm going to say that's the offset. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to click on the A terminal first. And I'm going to click on the create dot. And then in my properties, I'm going to just give me the option to change it here. So let's just see. That doesn't do it. Let's go click start. Round, round. Here we go. Okay, so I want to see what this looks like in 3D, so I'm going to take a section through it. And that's exactly what I've just got. see that so you can see that it's actually connected okay so here you can see it's obviously going through the wall there so it should be a little bit higher right So you can see that as I'm moving it up, all of them are moving together. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. Let me see. Oops, not attaching it. Okay. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the other part. I'm going to connect it to the other side. Right, so here is... Um, well, mechanical equipment, and it, again, like I said, you can do in 3D, 3D also. So if I click on create duct, you can see that it actually creates a duct for you. Right? This one is my supply air. When I click on the other side, 
you see that that one is now going to turn in. Okay, so I don't actually like to draw in 3D, so I prefer to do mine in a 2D space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my item, I'm going to click on create duct again, I'm going to choose the same duct that I had, which was the rectangular one, um, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to connect this one to my supply A. Let's just see if it's going to be straight. Let me have 50 pieces for that one. We should see what size we're using. 350 by 350. So we will click here. And we're going to change this to 350. 350. Right. And we'll go here. Let's see what we'll just line it up. Okay, so I wanted it to line up with this here, and I should have actually done that right um, when I started. Okay, so let me just do it again. I'm going to go dark, 350 by 350. Click on it, create my dart. You'll see it got back to the default one, and I went to 350 by 350. Right. And again, this is the return E. Okay, I wanted to line up with this, so let's just take it back a little bit. But it's actually 300 by 300. So I'm going to say dot in, and I'm going to say 300. See what it looks like. It's actually flashing all the way. See, I'm changing the properties again. 350 by 350, and I'm going to make it 350. I'm not having a luck here. Let's try again 250 by 350. Now I found made it a little bit higher. So let's see what it looks like. Now you can see that it's actually it's doing it automatically. So it's automatically taking it up higher for you. Right, and I'm going to just draw a 300 pipe over here. Um, I'm going to connect it like that. And there it is. Right. So here you have it. So that's exactly what you do. Right. So you'll see that it's going up into the ceiling and it's connecting. Okay. So that's what it looks like. And you'll see that it automatically displays these uh, colors. So. At the moment, the default one for supply is blue, and the return A comes up as pink, and it's connected now. 
Thank you. Any comments to your comment? Okay, so we go back to our plan. And what we've done now is we've actually connected it, right? It obviously doesn't look exactly like this one because I have more time with this one. Um, but basically, that's what we're going. To, what we've done now. Just because we have some time, I just want to run you through the pipes that we have or the options. If you have your, um, so this is um, our mechanical equipment that we're looking at, you'll see that it actually shows you the type of pipes that you want to add. So you'll see that you've got your hydronic supply, you've got your hydronic return, and you've also got your sanitary. So if you do want to draw a pipe, all you do is click on one of those, right? And then choose the diameter and the offset. So for example, if I'm going to draw here, I'm going to change the offset now to maybe three, two. And just for example, I'm going to draw it out. I'm going to show you what it looks like you'll see that it, again, it automatically attaches itself. Okay, so what you need to do is click on your item. You'll see the connectors allows you to draw the pipes, specify the diameter as well as the offset. Right? And it doesn't matter where you draw it, you can or you can. Okay, but that's one of the webinars we'll look at later. The other thing that's also available, if you want to edit your duct, you can click on it and you can change the width of it. So I'm going to change it to a 225 and you'll see that it automatically does it for me. Okay, so that's the other option that you do have. If I click on it, go to my properties and I can change the width and the height of it. Okay, same with this one. If I click on it, I can change the width and the height of it. So if I change that to a 300, you'll see maybe not 300. It's like a button. 50, you'll see that it goes a little bit smaller. Okay, so those are your options in terms of how you would add um, mechanical equipment, air vents, and do your ducting. Okay, like I said, it's a very short webinar. Um, ideally, in summary, what we did look at is we looked at our HVAC system, um, and under our HVAC system, we looked at mechanical equipment. Right, so when we say mechanical equipment, it was to show you how to add items such as your mechanical um, equipment and air terminals and how to do your ducting as well as connecting the HF components. We also then looked at how to modify your ducts. That's the end of our webinar. If you would like more information on it, it's going to be available for download later today. Um, if you have specific um, topics you'd like us to cover, you're welcome to either email me at rose at Baker Bays or you can message us on any of these chat channels. Other than that, thank you for joining and I hope you have a good weekend.